In this video, I will teach you how to set up PHP development environment on Windows operating system. In order to develop and run PHP web pages, there are essential components that are needed and must be installed on your computer. Number one is a web server, which is essentially a program that is responsible for serving web pages to users in response to their request. For example, I have a browser open here. If I type in yahoo.com and hit the enter key, the web server is responsible for fetching this web page and returning to me the home page that I see here. So if, for example, I was to enter another page, which I know exists here, let's say test.php, the web server is going to try and locate this page on the server where this website is located. If it finds the page, it's going to return me the content of this page. Some examples of web server include Apache and Microsoft IIS. So you can actually just go to Google and uh, do a search of web servers web servers examples then you see a lot of examples of web servers that are available uh, we have nginx this is and then there's apache and some others the second component that we need in order to begin writing php pages on our computer is actually a database server which is a program that is used to store and manipulate information usually this is referred to as the back end of the application some examples of the database server include MySQL, MariaDB, and Oracle Database. And finally, we need to have the PHP interpreter installed on our computer so that we'll be able to display PHP web pages. There are many ways for us to install a web server, the database server, and PHP ng on the computer. The fastest method is actually to install a software like XAMPP server that has all of them pre-installed. This will make our development process very, very easy. All right, so let's go ahead and install XAMPP server. So I'll just go over to Google and type in XAMPP. The very first link that shows up here is XAMPP installer and downloads for Apache Friend. So click on this link. Once the page loads, you can see here that XAMPP Apache plus MariaDB plus PHP plus Pair. This is a software that has all the components that we need to begin writing PHP on our computer. On the home page, we have PHP 5.6, but I want to install PHP 7. So I'm going to click here for other versions. Here we have PHP 7 for 32 bit operating system. So I'm going to click on download. So take a few seconds to download. All right, the download is complete. I'm going to click on the executable file and then I'm going to allow it to run. The installation process for XAMPP server is pretty straightforward. So all we actually need to do is click on the options that we want to select. So here it's telling me that my antivirus is running and maybe slowing down the process. I'm just going to ignore this message and continue. This is a warning showing up here telling me that because of user account control on Windows operating system that I should try and avoid installing ZAM server in the C drive because it may not have permission to write to that particular directory. I'll just click on OK. And then I'm going to click on Next. So right here is a list of all the programs that will be installed when I eventually click on Next and then start the installation. You're going to have Apache installed, you're going to have MySQL installed, you're going to have FileZilla FTP server installed. So actually you can uncheck the ones that you don't need, but I'm just going to leave it as the default and then click on Next. Now it's asking where do we want to install ZAMP server. So because I have different partitions, I'm going to actually install ZAMP in a different directory. Depending on your operating system, you can actually leave the default so that it's installed in your C drive. For me, I'm going to install it in D drive and then take next and then choose next. I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay, we're on the page where it tells us setup is now ready to begin installing ZAMP on your computer. So we're just going to click on next and then it will begin installing the software on the computer. This should actually take a few seconds.
Okay, so now we've got into the final step. Setup has finished installing ZAMP on your computer. Do you want to start the control panel? Yes, we want to start the control panel. So click on finish and then allow the control panel to start. So this is the control panel for ZAMP server. As you can see here, we have the various services that are available. We have Apache, we have MySQL, we have Fizilla, Mercury, and Tomcat. So for us, we only need access to Apache and MySQL. So we're going to click on start. So it's going to start Apache and it's going to tell us that Apache is running on port 80 for HTTP and port 443 for SSL. And then we're also going to start MySQL server. All right, so we can see here that both servers are running. We have Apache running and we have MySQL running, which means that we are now ready to begin working with PHP. In case you encounter any problem while trying to start up ZAMP server, you need to check if you are running Skype because by default, Skype runs on port 80. So if you're trying to start up ZAMP server while Skype is running, it may start on a different port or it may not start entirely. So you need to try and debug. If there are any errors, they will be displayed at the bottom part here. Now that we have ZAMP server installed, we can actually go to our browser and type in localhost in all lowercase actually. So once we type in localhost, it takes us to the default ZAMP server page. So here we have access to view PHP info. This will tell us, give us information about the PHP server which was installed along with the ZAMP software. So I click on PHP info and then it gives me detailed information about the PHP interpreter. So here we see that we have PHP version 7.0.13 and then there are a lot of information that will also be uh, displayed here, which we are not going to bother ourselves with at the moment. All right, so if I come back here, I also have a link here to phpMyAdmin, which is actually an interface that allows us to manage database. So if I click on phpMyAdmin, it's going to actually load the database for me. And then uh, right now, these are all the default databases that comes installed. That is how easy it is to actually install ZAMP server on your computer. So if you want to actually see where the files are located, you need to actually go to your drive. Uh, for me, I installed it in D drive and here you can see the ZAMP folder and all of the uh, different component that comes with it. So when we start our development, we are actually going to be putting our files inside this htdoc because this is the default folder where ZAMP or Apache will try to locate any website that you have. All right, so more about this later as we uh, continue in the course. In the next video, we are going to see how to set up development environment on a Mac computer.